So you have a pitch meeting for me? Yes, we do. The Batman. I have been anxiously awaiting this. If you guys don't know, Pitch Meetings has officially moved from Screen Rant to starting its own channel. So there's a link in the description box for the original The Batman Pitch Meeting. Make sure to subscribe to their channel. Because yeah, this is one of the best segments on YouTube. Leave a like if you can. Let's get to it to love the hell out of this movie. I'm excited. So, you have a new Batman movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I'm thinking we make this the darkest Gotham yet. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. We're gonna make it seem like this city passed some kind of weird one light bulb per household law. Sounds very dark. <laughs> you know it, sir, because we gotta make these movies darker and darker and darker and darker. That's just good business. How do you figure? Well, sir, we keep going like this. Pretty soon people will pay to see a completely dark screen, and we could play some kind of Batman audiobook or something. Oh, that will save us a ton of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So who are I would you go watch that. Batman? Oh, I was thinking we get Robert Pattinson. Oh, I see what you're doing. Twilight, vampire, vampire, bat, bat, man. Very clever. Actually, no, it's just because he turned into a real good and accomplished actor <laughs> since the Twilight movies. Good time? I'm enjoying myself, sure. That's, never mind. You know, really quick, I just wanted to say that it's really interesting what Robert Pattinson went through because when he was first cast, a lot of people went, oh, the Twilight guy, but it was such a quick turnaround of, actually, Robert Pattinson's a really good actor right now. The weird hurdle he had to overcome was the fact that there were people who really wanted, you know, Ben Affleck to still continue on the DCEU. So that's really where the fight started happening. So rather than him being backlash for his casting, he was backlash because of all the Batmans that are going on. So anyway, as Batman, he's going to be dark and brooding, right? Okay. But then as Bruce Wayne, he's going to be brooding and dark. You need that dichotomy, yeah. Yeah, and he's going to have dark eyeliner and hair in front of his face and say stuff like, you're not my dad, like it's 2006 or something. <laughs> nice. And this guy's Batman suit is totally bulletproof. I mean, bad guys just unload machine guns onto his chest, and he's not affected in the least. Yeah, so I guess his mouth must be covered too, right? Otherwise, they could just aim at that. No, that's completely nope. exposed, and nobody's <laughs> nope, gonna shoot never. at that part. Why not? Because that works. So who's he going up against in this movie? <laughs> yeah. oh, so Nobody ever thinks guys, to do sir. that. The main one of which is the Riddler. Oh, that guy riddles, sir, does, sir. So he's going around killing corrupt people in power and leaving little riddles for Batman. Oh, I bet he is. So then throughout the movie, Batman's gonna look at these riddles and then solve them pretty much immediately. Immediately. Nice. But sometimes he doesn't solve them immediately, and that means he's got to go stand on a rooftop with Gordon or Catwoman for an extended period of time. <laughs> that makes sense. So he's going to start digging around Gotham's criminal <laughs> underground, right? Getting to know the sketchy figures and stuff. Who are we talking about here? There's friggin' Carmine Falcone, and then there's the Penguin, who's Falcone's right-hand Penguin. Oh, we got <laughs> Penguin in the movie. What's he going to do? He's going to be like, hey, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> a very Italian-American flightless bird. <laughs> That's right, sir. So obviously I was thinking we get Colin Fett to play him. What? Yeah, just cover the guy in so much makeup and prosthetics that even after people Google it, they're still like, really? All right, I mean, I guess we could do that, sure. And so eventually Riddler's gonna attach a bomb around the neck of this corrupt DA and send him to a funeral of the mayor who he also killed. Uh-oh. Yeah, and this bomb ends up exploding right in Batman's face. Uh, he didn't know it was gonna blow up? No, he did. There was a clear timer on it, so. So he didn't take cover? Not even a little, so he goes flying backwards. Wow, well, I guess that's gonna hurt the exposed <laughs> bottom of his face. <laughs> Not even a little, but he is knocked unconscious. Ooh, that's gotta be a pretty severe concussion. Nope. So then the police bring him <laughs> to the police building, you know? I gotta say, like, he's pointing out all the things that every time I watch it, I'm like, he should have some injury, especially in your most grounded, realistic take yes. on Batman. That one shirtless shot behind his back with some scarring does not suffice. How does it only <laughs> scar under the armor? <laughs> yeah, like, your face should be banged up. You should have a concussion. You're not superhuman, you know? And even after that, he might go into it. He does, like, on the bat wing. Uh, oh, dude, he should have had his yeah. head ripped off from that. He should have had <laughs> so many broken limbs. I'm Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I'm this is justice. So then the police bring him to the police building, you know, where you bring injured people. So they unmask him? They don't, no. So then he manages to escape by <laughs> gliding off the top of their building and smacking into a little bridge thing. I mean, that's got to be a pretty severe concussion, too. <laughs> no, no, nope. no. Okay. So then eventually Batman thinks that Penguin is this informant that he's looking for, right? So he chases him down and a bunch of cars and trucks explode. It's going to 
look very cool. Oh, wow. Jeez. Yeah, it's going to be crazy intense. But then turns out it wasn't him. You know, that wasn't the informant. Well, those people in the exploded <laughs> cars died so Batman can follow an incorrect hunch? That's right. And uh, whoops. Whoopsie. <laughs> so later Batman's going to have this conversation with It'll be Falcone, correct down the Falcone's line. Falcone's going to be like, hey, did you know your dad paid me to kill a journalist back in the day? Did you know that? Oh, man, that's going to shatter Batman's world. It does. So then Batman goes to confront Alfred about this, and Alfred's like, oh, yeah, no, that's not true. Oh, yeah, it turns out the crime guy was lying. That checks out. Yeah, glad that was resolved. Resolved immediately. <laughs> yeah. So what else happens? Well, eventually Batman's going to figure out that Falcone, you know, the bad guy. Yeah. He's going to figure out that he's the bad guy. Right. I got to say, I don't know about you, but I feel like Falcone being the rat was like such a long movie. But I feel like so early on, I'm like, it's probably Falcone, right? <laughs> he's the least likely person at this point <laughs> because you think like, ah, oh, he's the head. He wouldn't be the rat. He's he's got to be the he's rat because be the in the when you put on your mystery movie hat, you're like, who's the least likely guy? He's the most likely. Guy. <laughs> yeah. For me and like almost everyone I talked to, they're like, yeah, I figured out pretty early on that it was Falcone who was the rat. That lines up. <laughs> Two hours later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he brings him out of this gangster club called the Iceberg Lounge, and when he's under this streetlight, Riddler snipes him. Oh. Yeah, and turns out that's exactly what Riddler wanted Batman. To to do because earlier there was a clue about bringing someone out into the light that was referencing this exact street light it was yeah. <laughs> very vague and also very specific yeah, <laughs> later riddler's like there was no way for me to kill that guy otherwise you know he's never out in the open oh okay except for the very public funeral they were both at earlier in the movie what and so yeah then riddler's in jail and falcone is dead oh uh, okay wow sounds like a great movie oh we're not done sir <laughs> no we're not no no, no. it's gonna feel Got like another maybe we go. should be but we're gonna keep going oh yeah see riddler actually Actually, kind of thought he and Batman were working together. Okay. And there's this whole other layer to Riddler's plan. Like he has a group of followers online that he's been scheming with. What's the plan? Flood the city and shoot a bunch of people. Oh my God, that escalated so much from killing gangsters and crooked politicians. It did, yeah. Because we gotta end these on big set pieces. <laughs> I guess we do, yeah. So how does Batman figure this out? Well, see, Batman <laughs> figures out that one of Riddler's murder weapons is this tool you use to tuck in carpets. How does he figure that out? Well, he happens to run into a cop who happens to start talking about how he happens to have an uncle who works in the carpet business. Oh, very specific uncles are tight. They sure are, sir. So now Batman looks under this carpet and finds the specifics of Riddler's plan. Oh, boy. So now Batman's got to rush to this arena and fight some Twitch commenters. What? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty serious. They're in Riddler cosplay and stuff. It doesn't sound too serious. But it's gonna be, and Batman's gonna get a shotgun blast to the chest. But he's got his completely bulletproof suit, right? So it doesn't hurt him? Yeah, this time it does. So he's like, ow, 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 ooh, stop, ow, ow, ow. But there are still a bunch of cosplayers around. Wow, okay, so I guess it's going to be pretty tough to get out of that situation, huh? Actually, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because see, Batman's got some green juice. Well, like a smoothie? No, it's like an injection, and it gives him a real good Weak boost. Ass. What was that? Unclear. Oh, okay, well, good that he had it. Hey, man, adrenaline action movie tropes, things you inject yourself with are awesome. I have never looked at it in just that lens of, oh, they're just like people you hate online who is fighting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, literally the shit so posters, funny. man. That's so funny. Because <laughs> that's what they are. They're just queuing on shit posters out here trying to feel important. <laughs> They're commentators who really got involved. You know, a lot of times you find these people online who are so vitriolic. They're like, yeah, but they just say that behind the keyboard. And this is the version of those ones who actually decided to take a stand. That's deep. <laughs> Dude, this, this movie works on so many layers. So then he's beating up one of the cosplayers, and the cosplayer's like, my name is Vengeance, which is what Batman calls himself. Oh, freaking nickname stealer. Yeah, so Batman kind of stopped, and he's like, whoa, 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 I guess I sure learned a lesson here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure sounds that way. But then there's this big electrical wire flailing around, and people are going to get electrocuted because there's water everywhere. Oh, no. Yeah, so Batman selflessly cuts the wire and gets electrocuted and falls from super high up. Oh, my God, is he okay? Yep. Oh, yeah. he's fine. So, <laughs> yep. Okay. So good. Totally okay. So then he takes a flare <laughs> and he guides a bunch of people out of this flooded area into, I guess, another flooded area because, you know, everything's flooded. A very underwater Gotham. Yeah. And then we'll tease him joke or something. We kind of have to. We kind of have to. And then Batman and Catwoman kind of ride their motorcycles next to each other and kind of split off like it's the end of a Fast and Furious movie. Oh, <laughs> well, it sounds like a great movie. Wait, is it done now? Yeah. Three hours later, it is. Yeah. Great. Well, it'll be nice to have a good cinematic experience you know it seems like everything is just streaming shows these days that's so true sir it will be nice and then you know what we can do if it's a success what's that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Yep. I mean, to me, it sounds like WB was so confident in this movie because they were announcing these spinoffs before this movie even came out. So, you know, that was another good indicator of the quality of the cinematic experience. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, make sure to subscribe to the Proper Pitch Meeting channel from here on out. You can subscribe to us. Check out all the Batman shit we talked about over the past week. Had a four-hour-long spoiler talk. My goodness. Leave a like. And hey, let's do a pay... <laughs> Mikhail Linden. Mikhail, you know where I'm going with this. If anybody could turn into the Riddler here at the Patreon, I think it would be you, because you got that look about you. You look like a sophisticated guy. You look like an intelligent guy. A guy who could probably orchestrate a very interwoven, interlocking Rube Goldberg machine of a plan. So intense, in fact, that we wouldn't even figure it out. We would be totally useless in the wake of your grand master plan, Mikhail. So, hey, we love you here. We don't want you to go off the deep end, start rallying all your supporters because I know that those are just gonna be the other people at our Patreon, turn them against us. What do we have then, Mikhail? Just darkness upon darkness, and you are a beacon of light, my friends. So be well, and uh, hope you're having a nice March. It's almost springtime. Get out there and enjoy the day, Mikhail. We'll see you soon. See you soon.